Colombia is currently hosting over 1.3 million Venezuelan migrants and refugees, and that number continues to grow every day. Actually, there is an outbreak of dengue fever, there is an outbreak of hepatitis, and there is an outbreak of a virus called Moyaro disease. We've been carrying music within us since we were young. It's a feeling. Music is an art. Today, thousands of Venezuelans will be forced to make the difficult decision to leave their homes behind in order to survive. As they prepare for the long journey and gather the few belongings they are able to carry, there will be thousands who have already crossed into Colombia after having walked for days, weeks, and months. They often arrive exhausted and without enough money for the basic needs they've come in search of, and the difficult journey as a displaced people continues. Colombia is currently hosting over 1.3 million Venezuelan migrants and refugees, and that number continues to grow every day. The need that exists is increasingly overwhelming, and the resources available are being stretched. But there's a hope that rises above this desperate reality. There are welcoming communities that have recognized the resilience of the Venezuelan people, and they are determined to walk with the displaced in their search for a new home and life. We invite you to be a part of this journey. This is Living Truth. Thousands of Venezuelans continue to make their way into Colombia through the Colombian border town of Maicao. They then journey over 450 kilometers to this very city called Barranquilla. Barranquilla is situated along the Colombian northern coast and consists of various settlement communities where many Venezuelans have been living for several years. The spectrum of basic living conditions like access to running water, electricity, and structural safety varies greatly according to each settlement area. The community we're in right now is called Los Angeles. Although living conditions are still modest, Many other Venezuelans who have settled in other areas would consider this community an upgrade. The migrants who settle here have a better chance at being properly integrated. They are surrounded by welcoming local neighbors and they don't face the daily risk of being evicted, which is often the reality for other settlement areas in the city. Elizabeth Santos knows all too well the Venezuelan migrant experience. A Colombian national Elizabeth immigrated to Venezuela years ago and started a successful business. Recently, she and her family were forced to leave Venezuela. Leaving her business behind, Elizabeth, her husband and children returned to Colombia to start their lives as migrants for a second time. We were there in Venezuela for 13 years. I really like to cook. I like to prepare food, and we started a little business as entrepreneurs with empanadas, only breakfast, only breakfast. What made us come back? It was really because we were seeing that things were getting harder every day. Because we worked with food, every day we sold 200 buns stuffed with chicken, sausage, ham and cheese. We sold arapas, and suddenly the products began to be in short supply. They weren't selling crates of flour, but they were selling five kilograms of flour per person. So my husband and I went and we managed to buy 10 kilograms of flour. So it was very complicated to stand in line. We had two little children. Now we couldn't buy 200 buns. They only allowed 20 buns per person. And this led us to think, well, now it's time for us to go back, because it's about the future of our children. What stopped us, or what held us back more than anything, it was the fact that we were leaders in the church. So we used to think about what was going to happen if we left. It really was very hard to make that decision. A couple of days ago, a friend there called me up and she was crying, and she told me, teach me, how does one flee the country of their birth? It's very hard. So overnight, everything changes. You really have to start from zero, and that's the hard part. It's the part that affects you more emotionally. 
When I came back, they weren't letting moving trucks through the checkpoints. But the grace of God is wonderful. When we came on this road, we found ourselves with several guards we used to sell breakfast to. And my husband is very outgoing. He teases everyone. Because of that, he used to joke around a lot with them. When they saw him, they asked, what are you doing here? And we told them, we're going back to Colombia. Which one is your car? And he told them, that one over there, that's our car. And immediately, because they were senior officers, they told the others, allow this car through. We could see the grace of God in this moment, where they didn't inspect us at all. We ended up in a small, one-room apartment. We didn't have any space for more than our beds, and so the other things had to go in the backyard. Because of that, our things in the backyard were stolen. The work done for the Lord is never in vain. It's not in vain. I always remember an expression that my dad told me when I was 10 years old. He told us a verse that says, I and my house, we serve Jehovah. And he used to emphasize that to me. I didn't know that he was saying goodbye to me. And those were the last words he said to me. He told me, daughter, never forget that the best thing you can do in life is to serve the Lord. It's knowing how I would like to be treated in a foreign country. It's knowing that they, Venezuelans, too, are children of God. They're his creatures. And working with them has really been wonderful for us. Because in spite of it, I've learned a lot. In spite of being born in a Christian home, this has been a schooling for me. I've asked them many times, if you were to go back to Venezuela right now, what would you do? Or what wouldn't you do compared to what you used to do? I asked them that. Then they told us, we wouldn't throw away food. We wouldn't waste money on weekends. We'd share more with our families. So those are the experiences that they've had. <laughs> You'll laugh at me because I can honestly tell you I'm Venezuelan. I'm Colombo Venezuelan. I'm Colombo Venezuelan. My children are from there, and that makes me belong more so to them because they were born in that country. So I'm Colombo Venezuelan. Because I love the Colombians, it's the land I was born in, and may the Lord bless this land. Elizabeth meets regularly with Venezuelan women in a church-based support group. A sense of community and bonding are crucial for displaced people. Feeling welcome and connected, these women share their stories and learn that there is hope for them here in the community of Los Angeles. It's easy to forget that not too long ago, Venezuela was once the wealthiest nation in Latin America with the world's largest oil reserves. But in 2014, the economy began to collapse and has continued in a downward spiral ever since. As the cost for necessities and services began to skyrocket, so did the number of migrants and refugees, causing the largest exodus in the region's history. From about 700,000 at the end of 2015, the number of migrants and refugees from Venezuela has now reached over 4 million. By the time this program airs, the numbers will have increased drastically. This is Living Truth, El Camino. Living Truth and the People's Church are partnering with Tierfund and Latin American Mission to support the wide-ranging needs of the Venezuelan people throughout Colombia. These long-standing mission agencies work together with local churches to ensure the most efficient use of resources are getting to those who need them most. Their support ministries include both immediate relief programs and long-term care initiatives centered around sharing the love and good news of Jesus. It's a special day here at the church in Los Angeles. The long-awaited Ontario Christian Gleaners food donation has finally arrived. And everyone pitches in to help offload the precious cargo. This container with 200 buckets of dehydrated meals sat in Colombian customs for six months. 
Each pail holds about 375 servings. Locals will often add rice, beans, corn, or meat to extend the number of servings. The soup mix is comprised of dehydrated vegetables blended and packaged by the Ontario Christian Gleaners in Cambridge, Ontario. The People's Church in Toronto, Canada provided the funding to ship the containers to Colombia for reshipment into Venezuela. This shipment holds the equivalent of approximately 1 million servings. About 75,000 servings will remain in Los Angeles, with the remainder being smuggled into communities in Venezuela. In the second chapter of the book of James, we read the following. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. There's a well-known phrase that goes like this, actions speak louder than words. If this is true, the Colombian church is shouting the love of Jesus to the people of Venezuela. They are demonstrating that faith in Jesus isn't simply embodied in words, but also in practical deeds. From feeding the hungry, to clothing the naked, welcoming the stranger, and crying alongside the broken, the Colombian church embodies our living savior at work. As thousands of Venezuelans make the decision to leave their home country every day, the need is too great for any one church or ministry to meet alone. It is time for the global body of Christ to respond. I invite you to join us as we actively partner with the Colombian church to meet the practical needs of the displaced pouring out of Venezuela every day. Living Truth is partnering with Tear Fun and Latin America Mission. Our goal is to raise $300,000 to help support our Venezuelan brothers and sisters. We encourage our Living Truth family to prayerfully consider offering your generous financial support. With your donation, together we can offer assistance to those who have become homeless, destitute, sick. To offer your support, simply visit our website or write to the address on your screen or call 1-888-269-6085. You can also make a secure donation online. We thank you in advance for your generous and heartfelt support. The local church here in Colombia isn't just a building with four walls where people gather a few times a week to learn and fellowship. The local church here in Colombia is the tent along the refugee highway, where loving volunteers treat and wash the feet of the displaced traveler who has walked for several days. It's the clinic along the border town where medical professionals treat those who would otherwise have no access to medical care. It's a space within a village where meals are provided to the hungry every day. Through educational programs for children, trauma counseling, worship services, and small group sessions, the church inspires the displaced with a sense of belonging and deep spiritual care. And it's the courageous women and men who risk their own safety to ensure aid is getting to those who need it most. The local church is made up of those who have personally accepted the call to connect God's kingdom with compassion, justice, and the good news of Jesus. Venezuelan refugees are leaving their country by the tens of thousands and the road to elsewhere is long and arduous. Many travel on foot, and modest church-based clinics such as this one offer a safe place for rest, a shower, a meal, and medical attention. My name is Evelice Naranjo de Ginez. I'm a volunteer missionary and I work as a volunteer doctor, both in Venezuela and in Colombia. The care given in Colombia is for the migrants and in Venezuela to all who are chronic patients who don't receive medicine because there is an absence of such things in our country. My name is Fabio Ginez. Together with my wife, we are developing a social project 
I'm in charge of managing medicine, food, clothes, footwear, and since my wife is a doctor, she is the driving force because under her direction and the direction of God, well, it is first place, it's God's direction, it is to help people. With respect to health and medicine, there are no supplies. And the few supplies that do come are for the patients who need them the most. Actually, there is an outbreak of dengue fever. There is an outbreak of hepatitis, and there is an outbreak of a virus called Moyaro disease, which causes stomach ache, fever, joint pain, and the person can become totally unbalanced. There are no antibiotics for it. And due to the crisis that we have with dengue fever, there is expired medication given in the schools to children to solve the problem, but they're expired already, and that can bring more problems for their health in the future. Last month, we cared for more than 2,000 people, referring to those who showered, washed their clothes, and received medical care. That's not including those who also receive spiritual care. Our faith has moved us to live by faith and not by sight. We understand that in this moment, it's the time that we can help our brothers and sisters and to understand that the Lord reveals himself at all times, not only in times of abundance, but also in times of scarcity. And it's here where we say, here I am, send me. With medical attention, some much needed rest and a welcome prayer, clinics like this one offer a renewed sense of hope to those who continue their journey. In chapter 25 of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus describes his return and the end of the age, and he explains the rich welcome that many will find in his kingdom. As part of that description, Jesus makes the following statement. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. As I've witnessed people washing the feet of weary travelers, I've seen Jesus. As I've observed the church feeding the hungry, I've seen Jesus. When I've heard the story of a mother who was six months pregnant, as she made the arduous journey to get to safety, so that her child might be born in better circumstances. I was reminded of the birth story of Jesus, how Mary herself had to make a difficult journey in search of safety, ultimately giving birth away from her home in a manger. Take a closer look and you'll realize Jesus is all around us, and he is especially here, hidden in the faces of the poor, the weary, and the needy pouring out of Venezuela in droves. Hope can fuel our attitude. Hope of finding work to provide for one's family. Hope of settling into a new environment and feeling connected. Hope for a stable future. With hope can come laughter, song, music. The Venezuelan band known as Papayeras came together out of a collective hope for a brighter future. The buskers traveled throughout the neighborhoods of Barranquilla, playing both Venezuelan and Colombian folk songs. Requests are always welcome. Well, we came here to Colombia with the mission of finding a better life. Since we are musicians, we got together to make music. And so this is how we earn a living. I choose music as a way of life. It's no secret, we all know the situation that's happening in our country, Venezuela. In one way or another, I had to survive. And well, through music, we fill all the homes of Barranquilla, of Colombia, with joy. It feels like a family. Now that my family is far away in Venezuela, so now they're my second family. My mom and my sisters, are back home in Venezuela. I left my two children. 
my mom, my brother, and my dad. My mom is in Venezuela, and I have two children. Well, I left my two children, my mom, my dad, and my brothers. It was so painful to leave and leave them behind the first day, because that was the first time I had ever left my country in search of something else. And that was what caused me the most pain. And well, the last straw for me was running out of food for my kids. That wasn't easy at all. Unfortunately, we're a rich country, but poorly run, thanks to the government that we have in this case. My mom and my kids were what motivated me, as well as the things that are happening there daily. Every day it goes from bad to worse. Well, the last straw for me was the economic situation, the food. I had two jobs in Venezuela. I worked at two companies. I had the opportunity to have two jobs because the basic materials of what we produced ran out. I ended up unemployed. I had to leave. We are here, as they say, borrowing from everyone. And we know that the situation there is difficult, a bad government. The government seizes everything. There's nothing left over for the people. My future? To work in my country, to work in my country for my kids, my family, that's my future to be comfortable, to have a home, to have stability, a dignified and honorable job, that truly, oh my lord. And well, what do I want for my future? That my kids would live how I lived at their age. To bring well-being to my kids so that they will grow up healthy. My future is to have a good job in Venezuela. It's been two years and seven months of not seeing my family. I hope to go back very soon to see them and to always be with them there. It's fun for them to listen to loud music, and they like to dance. And that's why we've had this very good reception. And it's opened the door for us on every street we pass through, in every house, every home. We've been carrying music within us since we were young. It's a feeling. Music is an art. Music. Music heals the soul. We've been going to places where there are very sick people, very sick children, and as they listen to the music, it's very satisfying to see how you're filling them with joy. Music for me is my life. I feel happy with music. I feel joyful. Knowing that in another country, like here in Colombia, our culture is heard just as we listen to theirs.
Living Truth and the People's Church are partnering with Tearfund and Latin American Mission to provide Venezuelans with the support they need as they search for a new home and life in Colombia. Our partners work with local churches made up of loving women and men who are constantly struggling to stretch their own resources to provide the care that is so desperately needed. From feeding the hungry, to clothing the naked, welcoming the stranger, and crying alongside the broken, the church is embodying our living savior at work, and the work is unceasing. Our goal is to raise $300,000 to help support the work of the church through Tear Fund Canada and Latin American Mission. To do this, we need your help. Our Living Truth family has always responded to the call for justice and compassion in our global neighborhood. By acting on our call to love and care for our Venezuelan neighbors, we are living out our faith in Jesus. We are demonstrating that our faith is not simply embodied in words, but also in generous, practical actions. We are opening doors for people to see and experience the power and love of Christ. We encourage you to prayerfully consider making a donation to support the displaced people of Venezuela. Living Truth, the media ministry of the People's Church in Toronto, Canada, is partnering with Tear Fund and Latin America Mission. We encourage our Living Truth family to prayerfully consider offering your generous financial support. With your donation, together we can offer assistance to those who have become displaced, destitute, and sick. To offer your financial contribution, simply visit our website or write to the address on your screen or call 1-888-269-6085. You can also make a secure donation online. We thank you in advance for your generous and heartfelt support. We can often make the mistake of painting the refugee reality with a single brush. But it's important to remember that each displaced group is unique in their needs and who they are as a people. Our Venezuelan neighbors aren't fleeing from a natural disaster or a war-torn situation. They are being forced to actively make the decision to leave their homes because the most basic human needs are no longer accessible. Millions have made their way out of Venezuela into countries all around the world and thousands continue to arrive here in Colombia every day. Their journey is long and filled with uncertainty as they move forward with only the will to survive. Although the Venezuelan migrant crisis is greater than ever before, God continues to move in amazing ways through our partners and the church body here in Colombia. These loving women and men have accepted the call to connect God's kingdom with compassion, justice, and the good news of Jesus. We invite you to join us and be a part of this call as we continue to pray for our Venezuelan brothers and sisters. This is Living Truth. Join us next week as we return to the Resolve series from Brett McBride. We ask you to keep our Venezuelan and Colombian brothers and sisters in your prayers and to continue with your generous financial support. This is Living Truth.